spent some time with them, and they're really enthusiastic, energetic. Hey, by the way, let's give a little tribute to last night. They, what a great crowd that was. Tremendous. And Obi Toppin, wow, what a talent. Virginia has lost three in a row to Duke in this building. Well, it's no secret. Tempo, tempo, tempo. Ken Palm has it down. But if you look at Virginia, they're last in terms of the tempo and speed of the game. They go down low to start the game. And laying it up off the front of the rim. And unable to convert was Jay Huff, but it will stay with the Hoos. Got to convert that in there. You got around the basket, seven foot. You got to go up strong to that basket. Duke will play some pressure. They want to speed up the game. They want to play at a faster pace. And Virginia wants to control tempo. Duke starting four freshmen with Wendell Moore, Vernon Carey, Cassius Stanley, and Matthew Hurt all on the floor. Plenty of experience still with this group for UVA. And a fadeaway by Diakite comes up well short. Tough, tough shot right there. Tough shot. He made one of the greatest shots in the history of Virginia basketball when they beat Purdue. Tough pass to handle. Duke's had down a, around the knees of Vernon Carey. You know, Bob, Duke's had a real tough time starting games. First five minutes has been tough for them, on the road especially. He had Clark weaving underneath the basket, but with the big man lurking, doesn't put a shot up. Now he whips a pass into a turnover right into the hands of Matthew Hurt. See, Virginia wants him to play five on five. They don't want to give transition baskets. You don't want to turn the ball over, live ball turnover, you get layups against Duke. See, that forces Duke now to really make a lot of passes, take time off the shot clock. Here's Wendell Moore, way off the mark, did not hit the rim, out of bounds, and it will go to Virginia, I believe. Coach K, really not happy, said after that game, it really wasn't us. We are not playing the basketball with Cable. He told us that before the game. He said, you know, it's 28 games now. I don't want to hear this fresh nonsense. It's 28 games. Time to mature and grow up. They'll take that clock right down. Tempo's been their key. Braxton Key. Yes. One of his relatives in the house here was a fair player, and it was Samson, Ralph. Actually came the route of Alabama, transfer. Trey Jones pulls up at the elbow. That's too strong. Braxton Key's got the rebound. Getting the lead, I think, is really essential to do. I think it's a little psychological problem. They keep reading about we don't get good starts. He had Clark well short. Here comes Trey Jones. And Carey tries a deep one and buries a triple. Tell you one thing, that kid got some ability, talent, inside, outside. Came here, lived up to the billing as a McDonald's superstar. Maryland, Kansas, and Duke, the three teams that all have two wooden award late season top 20 players. As Jay Huff connects from the corner. Tell you one thing, Huff wide open. He spaces the floor well for a seven footer. He can make that shot as we see. Nobody rotated it out on him. It was an excellent pass, too. Clark might be one of the five best little guys in basketball. Matthew Hurt with a brick. Way too strong. And no rush right here. Tempo, tempo is their king. I mean, they win games in the 50s. They've allowed 34 to Syracuse. 34 on several occasions. Incredible. Key to the bucket. And he's fouled. <laughs> I watch this guy. Here we go. That's the pass. Look at the guy. Oh, he knows where his teammate wide open. Wide open. Mr. Huff says, thank you. Tremendous pass. Eyes behind the back of your head is that statement. Jack White, Jordan Goldwire, and Javin Delorier all check in as some of the freshmen go and have a seat, including Vernon Carey, who picked up his first foul. Well, that's been a problem for Curry. Carey in foul trouble. Tony Four Bennett. of the six for Tony Bennett scored by Braxton King. You know, what an unbelievable 
story last year, winning that national championship after the disaster the year before. Three outstanding players went early to the NBA draft. Jerome, Hunter, and Guy. They were terrific, those three, Bob. There's a back line defense. They're going to jam it in. There it is. Jackson by Huff on the drive by Cassius Stanley. He had Clark the trailer. Jay Huff in the pivot. Got the, the size shots. advantage. Oh, take that ball to the basket. Instead, it's key. Back out to Diakita. He's got a three. Key to Mr. Diakite. Hey, what a combo. Diakite's having a strong year. He's become a key, vital performer here with the movement to the NBA and a big three from last year. From the corner, it's Stanley. In and out. Here we go. Duke not with a good start again. First five minutes has been tough for them on road games. The tensile kicks it back up to Huff. Diakite and it tapped out of his hands to Trey Jones. Well, the tensile is a guy that can hit six threes in a row. Delorier plus the foul. So a chance for a three point play for the senior Javin Delorier when we come back. They went to the veteran player. They went to the Duke to survive and win here. It's time to get back to the action in this Sonic blockbuster matchup with Javin Deloria at the line trying to complete the three-point play and make this a two-point or rather a three-point game. He does just that. It's a very deep basketball team, Duke this year. They got guys that can rotate to that bench. And now some pressure for Kihei Clark to deal with. Nice post-up move. On the 10 side with the lob oh, and Jay Huff My with God. the finish. No. That was clinic 101 and how to break a press. Go diagonal with the Bears, post up to the middle with Diakite. Tony Bennett's kids executed that so efficiently. Just a tremendous job in attacking the pressure. At three, just a little too strong for Joey Baker. And it's run down by Diakite. And that's Baker's strength, shooting the three ball. Puts it on the deck, but the spin move picks up his dribble. And now Walter Tensai bails him out. On the curl, it's key. Tied up. And they'll say traveling call. At the second Virginia turnover. Take a look right here at attacking the press. Now watch this right here. Gonna have the post up play. There's the post up the Acadian. Goes opposite, and there's the diagonal pass, the lob, the layup. What a clinic, 101, and how to beat the pressure. They were prepared for that. He knew, Tony Bennett's so shrewd, he knew, hey, Duke's gonna try to speed up the game. They're gonna trap us, they're gonna pressure us, and we must be ready for the variety of presses they may use. When you're trying to break the press, who's the most important player? The point guard that has the ball first, that pivot guy in the middle of the floor? Who's the guy that's got well, the toughest job? Obviously, you got the point guard's gonna have the ball and make the pass, but you gotta have a guy get to the open space. You gotta step to the ball, too. Too many guys wait for the ball. You better step to the ball and meet that ball. And Diakiti did a good job. Double up on Carey when he touched the ball in the post. Back on the floor with the one foul. He's got. Goldwire got caught in midair. Baker back to Jones over to Goldwire for three. And a wall off by Walter Tensa. Really good. Great job blocking out. That's a lot of. People don't realize that is really the final phase of playing good man to man defense. Blackouts as a team, as a unit, communication. They do all of that. Duke's only one for five from three to start off. Good one, one right here. You keep this that size. The lane. Too strong. That is one on one matchup right there. Vernon Carey. Leans in, plus the foul. Strong, powerful, and that's what Coach K said. We want him to go in strong to the group. Told us before the game, be aggressive. Use that talent he possesses. He's one-on-one, now watch us go real strong to the basket. 
You know, you know, all the naysayers. I mean, we saw what happened the day. Hey, what's wrong with Duke? What's wrong with Duke? How many teams would like to have what's wrong with Duke? Be 23 and 5, be in the situation, wins over Michigan State, Kansas, Florida State. I mean, the bottom line is when they lose, when they lose a game, it becomes an unbelievable story. Well, they put this uniform on, and there's just a certain set of expectations and parameters that go along with wearing this uniform as Goldwire picks up the backcourt foul. But, you know, Mike Krzyzewski said we're using 12 different starting lineups this season. We've got 10 players that average 12 or more minutes. And he said, look, if I'm a Broadway producer, I'm not producing Les Mis or Cats. He said, I'm producing a cabaret. We basically have a different, a different cast every night. We're a little bit of everything, and that is something that has been a challenge for him this year. He really has some incredible quotes. What about this? He said, Jenny wants to run a fantastic six-minute mile. We want to run a, what, a five-minute mile. Maybe, and you said maybe more like a four-minute mile. Yeah, I said maybe a four-minute mile. A fadeaway. Old school from Walton Tensai, but that's a little too strong. Walton Tensai is the kind of guy that can make five in a row. He can go over eight as well. Very streaky. Vernon Carey, spin cycle with the are left you, hand. Beautifully done. Are you serious? That's a big-time move right there. Uses either hand as he goes to the goal. His dad played NFL football. Played for the Dolphins, actually played at the University of Miami. He was an offensive tackle that frustrated a lot of my Jets pass rushers over the years. As well, the Tensai loses his footing. We are tied at 11. Coming up on eight minutes gone by here in the first half. Something has to give in this Sonic blockbuster. As you mentioned, Duke. Number two in America in points scored per game. No one allows less points per game defensively than Virginia. That's the key right here. What's going to prevail? Iakita. Yes. Iakita's become another one option. Oh, what a shot he made. The Akite, that shot he made against Purdue. Talk about drama. It looked like Purdue was going to the Final Four. And here comes Virginia. And they took advantage. And they want to win the national title. movement Trey Jones he hits a three he's a key player in this game he's a veteran player he's played in intense competition last year this year and he's got to be a key player keeping the team steady and keeping the team really poised and how much gas he has in the tank after playing 47 minutes in the double overtime loss to Wake Forest on Tuesday running the floor coming up short on the reverse was Wendell Moore well, no, Moore had a big game in the last game against Wake at 25. They gave up 113. Great win for Danny Manning. Probably the biggest win in his tenure thus far at Wake Forest. He had Clark. He comes up short on a reverse of his own. Here yep. comes Trey Jones the other way. Pulls up at the elbow. Yes. See, that's the pace they want to play. Up the court as quickly as they can. Put pressure on the ball. Speed up the tempo. Plus, could have to give them some more offensive production. There's no doubt about it. I fouled on a reach-in by Wendell Moore. It's going to be tough to win this game in the 50s. They're going to have to get some points. Both of these teams have weapons they like to go get the second foul, third foul. He's been in such foul trouble the last five games. It's unreal. He and John Mooney of Notre Dame, the only two players in the ACC in the top five in points, rebounds, and field goal percentage, and carries off to a perfect start in this game. He had Clark met by DeLorean. Deloria with a good defensive play. Clark has been struggling trying to get a finish at the basket. He's been a solid player for the Cavs all year long. Giving away a lot of size on that perimeter. It's so quick and so explosive. Shot clock down to eight. Wendell Moore. Diakite shuts him down. He's got his dribble back. Shot clock at three. Puts up a three. I hit the backboard first. Wow. Delorier with an offensive rebound. Delorier. He rolls to the goal. He's met by Huff. Huff goes to the deck. And it looks like a foul is going to be called. 
on Wendell Moore as he grabbed the wrist of Jay Huff. So now Wendell Moore has his second foul. And coming up next, we head to the Xfinity Center. It's ninth ranked Maryland, number 24, Michigan State. The Terps lead the Big Ten by two games over the Spartans. That's coming up next here on ESPN and the ESPN app, so you can watch that game anywhere. Well, I'll tell you, the Terps had a really miracle win against Minnesota. They had a big three at the end. They were losing that entire game, basically. Richard Patino, man, heartbreak hotel. It's a big game for Michigan State. They win that game, they tighten that big ten up. Freshman Casey Morsell fades away. Short. Making shots and scoring has been really a tough situation. Running the floor, Deloria, tough catch. Crowd he wanted walked. a traveling call. I James, James Breeding said he never had complete control of the ball. He counts. I don't count. You, you don't count. count. You count a lot in my book. He doesn't count. But you're right. To these guys, you don't count at all. He, he, runs, the, <laughs> he runs the show, man. Jack White with a shot fake from the corner. Leans in. No foul call there. The follow, though, is perfect for Goldwire as he got a bunny. Duke has come out to play with a lot of intensity and passion. Playing hard, trying to get this game at a faster pace. A five. Getting a lead on Virginia is big as well. It's a 7-0 Duke run as we speak, and Vernon Carey's back at the table, set to come back in. Buck's got to give him some point production. If they don't get point production from him, the question is where they're going to get it. He and Dean keep that. Kite with a shot fake, and he threw it to nowhere. Thought Huff was going to roll down the lane. Threw it right to Cassius Stanley, who tries to go coast to coast. That doesn't go. And back the other way comes Casey Morso. You know the score of Virginia and Virginia Tech the other day was the half? I couldn't believe it. I thought it was a football game. 24 to 11 at the half. It looked like a fifth grade rec game. Oh, wide Huff open. Lays it in off the feed from Kihei Clark. No, no communication by Duke defensively. They've obviously struggled defensively. I mean, I know they're thinking of point total today is it going to indicate that. But you look at that NC State game and the Wake Forest game. Jack White left alone. That's short. Here comes Kihei Clark. Traveling call as he took the step around White. Tony Bennett, look at him. Tony Bennett, not a happy guy. It's Dick Vitale. I'm Bob Wischusen. And Vernon Carey picked up foul number two a moment ago. He's going to stay in the game for Coach K, at least for now with two as Golden Tensa goes to work. Goldwire picks up his second foul out near midcourt. Oh, this is a terrific arena. Great atmosphere for college basketball. And you know the inspiration for this building. Oh, right there. I'll tell you one thing. John Paul Jones, 99 years of age, will be 100, 100 on April 4th. His son played a vital role in having this building built. His son is a graduate here in 76. Nice move right there. Paul Tudor Jones, he told me today, sent me a text. He's not at the game because he's visiting his son. Paul Tudor Jones, the second out in California, but he's watching. Paul, well, you did a great job for your university, man. And your dad, God bless him. I'll hug you. I spent time with him at the Final Four in his hotel suite. He was there cheering his Virginia team on. Just a beautiful family. Vernon Carey fouled by Huff. That's his first. It really is a beautiful building. Oh, it's very plush, man. It's plush. It's a beautiful school. I mean, both these schools academically, really. You're talking, you better have 1,500 ESADs. You got no shot here. So you're saying, no you shot. and I, this is I, the only way we're going to attend an event at Virginia? <laughs> I would have no shot. Yeah. Trust me. <laughs> Air ball from the wing from Alex O'Connell. And it looks like it's going to go over to Virginia. I'll tell you one thing, Carey's out of the game right now. He loses a lot of minutes because of foul situations. Takes away from him. They're going to have full good trap. There's the post up. There's the opposite side. It's all part of teaching. Is the idea of that full court pressure just to try to get Virginia sped up? Now they get a turnover here from Cody Statman, but 
We'll check our next NBA Saturday primetime game coming up with Jason Tatum and the Celtics hosting Harden, Westbrook, and the Rockets. Coverage tips with the jump at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. And you can always watch both on the ESPN app from anywhere. But you want to try to pick up full court, maybe speed up a team that doesn't like to play fast. Well, that's really great, Coach Rashusa. Thank I'm you really very much. Proud of you. Man, you really unbelievable. You're going to be an analyst, play by play guy. You're 100% I'm, right. I'm just asking no, questions. You're right. You're right, <laughs> man. You're right. Right, you know your hoops. Trey Jones, Jack White battles with Diakite, and Diakite he, pulls it away. You know, Diakite, you can see the difference from last year and this year. He knows he's a star. He's got that little bounce to the stuff. What do we call it? Swag? He's got that little swag. And it's a foul. You can't moan about that. That's a foul. And that will put Duke over the limit. O'Connell picks up his first. You think he's trying with the die on the top of the head to, yeah. to do the Dick Vital? Well, I'll tell you one thing. I wish I could even try. <laughs> there's, there's nothing there for me to try. So all the 10 side to the line. His first year here at Virginia. He has started the last 11 games, but can't hit the front end of the 1-1. One one. Has been able to score. They've got to get hit and start hitting that three. Foul is called on Wold to ten side. Only the fourth team foul on Virginia here in the first half. They still have two to give. He's the one guy to go points on the board quickly for Virginia. If he can get that jumper going, but now he's going to the sideline. That's his second, so Coach Bennett's going to sit him down. You know, when Tony Bennett showed me he was a great coach, to win the way he did up at Washington State, that's not an easy place to win at, trust me. And he did a great job. Turnaround, not there for Joey Baker. Off with a shot fake down the lane. Throws oh, it down. Oh, oh, are you kidding me? I didn't expect that. Oh, oh, he's making his fans pump. Huff is making it pump. Oh man, Mr. Huff, Mr. Huff, where did you get that baby from? Oh, are you serious? Are you serious, Mr. Huff? Come on, Bob, is he serious? He looks serious. He's very serious, he's right. Oh, that's gotta give him a little confidence. He did a great job right there defensively. He rotated over defensively, and his size became a factor. Huff's got eight points already here in the first half. He only averages about eight points a game. He's right looking for three oh, nice more off the shot fake. Gives it up to Statman. Statman steps in for two. That's a brick. And it looks like a foul is going to be called, I believe, on Diakite underneath. He's not going to get away with that. You're a veteran player. You're a star player. Oh, look at this. He's posterizing him right there, baby. A little jab. Missed the hump. Look at him. Look at a big first step. Comes up the jab. And there it goes. Right there. At the poster, baby. Right there. I'll tell you one thing, the jab step set that up in the first big step. Matthew Hurt, the backdoor feed. Hey. Baker a little too strong. Off another rebound. Hurt did a great job finding the open cutter to the goal, but they didn't convert and help again with the rebound. And he has become a factor here this afternoon. He had Clark oh. up to Hull. Mr. Clark says, you're going to be a star today, Mr. Huff. You're headed to be a star. You're going to be BMOC. Big man on this beautiful campus in Charlottesville. Coach K, not a happy camper right there with their defense. He's also not happy with the guys blowing the whistle. Oh, Mr. Huff, did you expect this? It's oh. an 8-0 Virginia run. And ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Try a big bacon classic today. And Marcus by Goldman Sachs. With a high-yield online savings account, you can money. A rare miss at the line for Trey Jones. Hit the three-point play, so it's a one-point lead for UVA. T.A. Clark kicks one to a wide-open Braxton Key. And then 
gets it back. Three minutes to go in the first half. You gotta really admire a kid like T.A. Yeah, that's a right guy play right there with these giants as quick as could be. Braxton Key quickly to the goal. He's been a real productive transfer. Rock Sampson's sitting there really happy. That's my guy, man. He's one of my family members. Delorier in traffic, fouled by Marcel. That will be a one and one for Javin Delorier. Speaking of your Mount Rushmore players in college basketball, there's one of them right there. Yeah, he's one of my four best players in my 40 years sitting next to him. Is Terry Holland, former coach here. Can you sit next to Terry Holland? Love with Terry's wife, man. I'll tell you what, Terry was a heck of a coach here. And that's so Terry played at Davidson. You saw Bob McKillop last night, Davidson. Oh, and here's the Mount Rush Boys. Four best coaches, four best players. You want to know the four best players are? Patrick Ewing, in my 40 years. A guy named Mr. Jordan. A guy named Mr. Sampson. And a guy that played at Duke. It was tremendous as a college player, Mr. Layton. Not bad for, huh? How do you get the book? And if you get the book from Dick Vitale, where's the money going? Well, thanks a lot for bringing it up. We're trying to raise money for kids battling cancer. So all the dollars go there. If you get the book right now at Autographic to your desire, you just go to DickVitale.com. DickVitale.com. A lot of Duke people have bought the book over the years. I mean, over this year. And now I need those Virginia people to come through for us as well. If you want to go through the V Foundation to help kids battle cancer. Oh, Clark, oh, tough pass for too, hard. too hard. He had the right idea, good vision, good feel, knew where he was, but just too hard, too tough to handle. Two point lead for Virginia. That was their sixth turnover. And stay tuned for the Jeep halftime report. Reese Bonds and Seth Greenberg standing by. An ACC upset to talk about. Joey Brackett's latest projections as well. And an offensive foul here on the push off by Joey Baker. Tell you one thing, you know, last year obviously a different personnel. The personnel Duke had last year was in another zone compared to personnel this year. But they made 13 threes here. They've only made two threes right here. Oh, here, look at the seeds, right? No change with Baylor. No change at all with their loss. Still up there at number one. Even though Dayton is creeping up there. I mean, 27 and 2. I don't know about you, Bob. I was really so impressed with Dayton yesterday. Not only OB, who's terrific, but their backcourt with Crutcher and the kid Chapman were outstanding. Also, the kid off the bench, Watson. Sometimes you can look at the record. Sometimes it's the eye test. Dayton passes every eye test that you would ever want to see. Now followed by Braxton Key off the Diakite drive. There's Braxton Key. He's passing the eye test. The offensive rebound. He's not passing the eye test with Coach K. Got to be a little upset with his team not blocking out. Goes right to the lane for the deuce. Remember this. Duke gets everybody's best hit. You said it earlier. I mean, everybody plays at another level when they see the Duke uniform. Nice spin. The drive by Joey Baker to make it a two-point game. Yeah, he's trying to add to his game rather than be just a jump shooter. That was a great drive right there by Joey. I don't think Clark has scored yet. Has Clark scored yet? He's one of our double-figure scorers, and I don't believe he has scored. He has not scored yet. Gives it up here to Diakite, who gets shut down. Gathers, and rims one out. But Delorier and Jack White come together. And neither yells same team loud enough to make sure that they don't fumble it out of bounds. You know, the tempo of the game is exactly what Virginia wants. There's no doubt about it. The score indicates what they want. I mean, Duke's choice, you said, number one in the country based on scoring, or number two, and in the 80s, and here it is, 23 so far, with the half coming down. There's a lot to be said for having an identity, and Virginia knows exactly who they are, exactly how they want to play, 61 possessions per game, on average, slowest pace in Division One, and if they kept that pace up, they would be the slowest paced team for five straight years, even though the face has changed. Diakite, that's way off the mark. And Huff taps it out, so it will go over to Duke. But they make no mystery under Tony Bennett about how they want to play. No, absolutely. He's got a style, he's got a system, and it's obviously a winning system. His record indicates that through his career here. Now, when you've got guys like Kyle Guy, Ty Jerome, DeAndre Hunter, who can score in combination with the defense, that gives you a chance to win a national championship. And they did it. And they did it. Trey Jones fouled on the deck, according to James Breeding. So that'll be a one and one for Trey Jones. So well, in the locker room, I guarantee with Atlanta, a little battle going on between Mr. Reddish and Mr. Hunt. They're having a little battle, those two guys. And maybe they have a little wager, too. 
They're both getting a lot of minutes, playing a lot of time with Atlanta. The Hawks for the young team. What about Trey Young for that team? Oh, man, I, I can't believe his number. He's averaging 30 a game. <laughs> Incredible. He's probably, what, 20 years old? That foul, by the way, on Kihei Clark, as you saw, his second. You can say that with the former Duke player in Storm. Mr. Tatum, what he's doing. We talked about last night. He had a chance eventually. He's going to be a player of the year in the NBA. He's that, that good. Well, speaking of the NBA, a special Sunday comes to you from the Big Easy. LeBron, AD, and the Western Conference leading Lakers take on Zion and the Pelicans. Our coverage tips with NBA countdown at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific tomorrow on ESPN and the ESPN app. Wow, Zion, what an unbelievable start he has had to his NBA career. Said it once, and I'll say it again. With that smile he has in his talent, his cash register keeps going ding a ling ding to shoot. Braxton Key drives it around to Laurier, throws one up to Diakite, missed time to jump, and it's tracked down by Cassius Stanley, and now Duke can hold for one and try and tie, or rather take the lead at halftime. Well, the last two possessions have come up empty in terms of good shots with the Virginia. They don't get the roll here. Jack White's got it. Tries to beat the buzzer, blocked by Huff, shut down again, and we're tied at halftime. 25-25, that's the kind of score that Virginia plays. We've had two ties, four lead changes, and 10 points in the first half. Here it is right now. They're going to show you right now how to, the ball is faster than bouncing it, so they utilize the ball there. And they're going to see the diagonal pass, post up to the move by Duquite. And then here it is. Now they're going to go diagonal to Mr. Huff with the lob. And it is breaking the pressure at its best. There it is, Jam City. What a tremendous job in that execution of attacking pressure defense. Carey challenged by Diakite, and he lost it out of bounds. Duke missed 10 of their last 12 to end the first half, although Virginia turned it over seven times. But, Dick, we talked about trying to pick up full court like the Blue Devils are right now to speed up Virginia. And they didn't really speed Virginia up much. It was the low-scoring first half that, you know, Tony Bennett wants to see. Well, they utilized, you know, the ability to control the tempo of the game more often, and they don't allow pressure to bother them. They're not going to play at a fast pace. That's not their style. Huff had a tremendous first half. Can he do it again in a second? Picks up his dribble here with five to shoot. It's out to Key for three. That was just about all the way down before it rimmed out to Vernon Carey. See, Carey wants to go. He's got to post up inside against Steve Kite. Double team by right Huff. There. It'll stay with Duke. See, the one thing I would do if I'm Virginia on the offensive end, He's being, Carey's going to be guarding when you talk to Kite. I'd bang the ball into Diakite and try and get him a third foul. So they make you play a little patient, too, as you see the number of passes Duke's going to go through. Delorier, right over the top of Huff. You know, Delorier came off the bench. Upperclassman, veteran player. He's had some good moments. Came in here early in the game, and he's really contributing to this game. Duke's a much deeper team than it had been in the past. A oh. steal by Trey Jones. And this the is trailer good. is Delorier. Oh. He missed the dunk. Oh, oh, oh. I was ready. That was a gift, man. It was Kihei a gift. Clark's floater. No good. The back tap by Diakite. Clark sizes up a three. Got it. Oh, he's finally on the board. One of the stars gets on the board with a three. That's a five-point turnaround. You've got a slam dunk on the other end, and you're going to be in good shape. Instead, they come back and get three. That's a nightmare when that happens. Good job of beating him to the baseline. And uh, more. Huff. Is able to wall off Vernon Carey for his fifth rebound. Did a good job there blocking out Carey. Now see right now, I'd get the ball to Diakite. I'd get it right to him. Get him some touches. He screens for Walter Tensai instead. That won't go. Struggling shooting the ball. There's it's a slow. hit ahead. Cassius oh. Stanley doesn't miss this dunk. And then he's slow getting back. Stanley, tremendous athlete. One of the best athletes in college basketball. He's a high riser. Just poor job right now. 
he did a good, good job getting back in transition. Ball to Tensai, still looking for his first basket. He's now 0 for 4. He got in early foul trouble and never got into a rhythm. Trey Jones, short with the left hand. Carey snatches it away and lays it in. What a rebound. That was a big time rebound, man. He went across the court to get a hold of it. And now we've got two big guys for Virginia, both on the deck, Hoff and Diakite. And the trainers come out to take a look at both. There's, again, on the missed shot, they're in transition. Played at a fast pace, but he wanted that ball right there. Oh, did he want that ball? Vernon Carey, work in the glass. Now at one end, while Vernon Carey has ended up with the loose ball, you can see Diakite and Huff head-on-head -head contact right oh, there. Wow. Ouch. 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 Oh, man. So that's going to get... Francisco Cafaro back up off the bench as well as Cody Statman to check in to replace Diakite and Huff. It's a major, major loss if he's going to sit in the sideline. We're talking about Diakite and certainly Huff as well. And be very, very careful here. You make sure he's fine with him. Trey Deuce got to take advantage now with a veteran player like that sitting on the sideline. Cut to the goal. And Key is blocked. Out of bounds with 10 to shoot. It will stay with Virginia. See, now Key's got to really step up. Now they went from Diakite, now they're going over to Mr. Huff. He seems to be alert. He seems to be alert. Well, Diakite is already checking back in. I think we see Huff back in quickly as well. Is Wendell Moore took it away from Braxton Key. Delorier down to carry, blocked from behind by Key. Braxton Key, man, it's been a big help for them. Came over the weak side with that block shot. They're going to score some points, though, man. Scoring has been absolutely difficult for them. Iaquita blocked and taken away by Vernon Carey. Offensively, really struggled for Virginia. Duke playing really some solid defense. Shot clock under 10 for Cassius Stanley. He's so athletic, so explosive. Uh, now he needs some help. Shot clock at five. And Del Moore bails him out. He'll take it to the bucket. A finger roll off the backboard is good. Just barely beat the timer. Starting to get a little separation here. It's getting to the point where they're going to start scoring some hoops when you look at Virginia. Uh, scoreless to this point. He remains scoreless. The Akite lost it. Key saved it somehow. Wow. Three on the shot clock. Wow. Kihei Clark with the left hand. That's too strong. Tapped out of bounds. It's a shot clock violation. The ball never hit the rim. Walden Tensai really struggling. He's got to give him some point production. He's got to make some of those threes. He's done during the year. Duke's trying to get away. Duke by five. So, you know, Virginia's got a five game winning streak, and all those games they won were like. By two and one and three. Right now, when you look at Virginia, they're going to come up some defensive stops because this thing is their offensive efficiency has been really not there at all here in the second half. And yet they're only down by five. Harry immediately double team. Sets up Trey Jones. Contested shot comes up short. Who's there to follow? Vernon Carey. See, unbelievable talent. Nobody blocks him out. Incredible. A couple of rebounds away from yet another double-double for Vernon Carey. He's got 13 on the year, and he's got a double-double in five of Duke's last nine games. Well, we really played really aggressive basketball right from the get-go. They told him they want to be a little more physical, more attacking. That's what he's done here. Braxton King, yes. Flushes around Jack White. Well, nice little two-man play here between Clark and King. Good execution, and they get themselves the layup. 
Double figures for the 13th time this season for the Alabama transfer. Vernon Carey goes to work again, draws the foul on Jay Huff. Oh, that's just smart coaching right there by Duke. Their staff pounding the ball inside to Carey. They're saying, yes, we want to get it to our guy, our horse inside. You know, right now you talk about MVP of the conference. He's got to be right there. I don't think he's any doubt about it. Warren certainly was up on top there earlier. Looking at him double up on that ball. Now he's going to come right to the glass, rebound that ball. Only a 65% free throw shooter, and he misses the first. There's no freshman in all of America that's been to the line more often than Vernon Carey. But the crowd senses that it's not always an automatic make. You know, he's old school, and he knows how to play in a post. He knows how to get that wide base we talked about. He knows how to step to the basketball and want the ball. His feet hanging up in the air, defense right there, charge. They gotta find a way. Virginia gets some scoring out of Clark. The Golden's 10 size gotta give him some scoring. That's the first foul on Key, but the 11th turnover for Virginia. Big game here, people. Big game. Florida State lost today. Clemson beat them. They're good. They're going into carry, man. They're going into him. And he draws another foul. This time looks like it's Francisco Cafaro picks up his second. Well, Duke's had a couple of inauspicious moments this season. Some things we're not used to seeing out of this program. But, of course, starting for freshmen, you never know. Snapped a 150-game home winning streak to a non-conference opponent when Stephen F. Austin Who's very them good. earlier this year. Yep, and the lopsided loss to NC State. Very good. White can't hit from the corner, giving up 113 points to Wake Forest, the second most points ever allowed by a Duke team, and yet they're on the number two line right now, ranked in the top ten, and a chance to win an ACC title. Because they got a lot of positives, too, man. You think about the wins of Michigan State, Kansas, Florida State. People got to talk about those babies, too. He had Clark. Fades away. Got oh, nice little move. Never lost his footwork inside. Kept his poise. Nick this plays there, that little guy, man. You talk about getting the most out of your body. One of the best guys in basketball under six feet. Vernon Carey. He wants to attack. He wants and to attack. He draws another foul on Kafaro. That's his third. Well, these are the moments. That Duke would like to forget this season. Yeah. Having said that, though, there's already plenty that they love to remember. And you talked about one of those big wins that they got against Florida State that has them right in the thick of the top of the conference for a possible championship in the ACC. I can hear Duke fans say, how come they don't show our big wins? Why don't they show our big wins? Because it's always a story. How an offensive foul on Jack White. The big story when they lose a the game. They look right here, man. If they win this game, they'll be deadlocked for Florida State and Louisville for first place in the ACC. Tell you, a lot at stake right here. Also for Virginia. Virginia wins this game, man. They close the gap. Great programs take hits every game. They can't relax. You wear a Carolina uniform. You wear a Duke uniform. You wear a Kentucky uniform. You're going to get everybody's best shot. Goldwire, a trailer, and Diakite, the block on Catches Stanley, but a foul call. Duke and attack and bow. Diakite rotates over. Foul call. You know, the tempo is basically the way Virginia wants it, but they haven't been able to take advantage by making plays happen offensively. Has Wilton's size scored yet? I don't think so. Not. He has not scored. No. Nope. Well, the Tensai is 0 for 5 from the field. Clark is yet they're only down by four. That foul, by the way, on Diakite.
Marte, his second. About five right now, Bob. Made that free throw. Let's see if Huff can get some of that going. He's capable of spinning the court and making the free. He can space the court. Give Bird and carry a little break right here with those two fouls. One of that was stretch drive. Key, the Akite on the backside has to gather. Oh, reaching oh. foul called on Deloria. You're not going to get away with that. You're not going to get away with that with the striped shirt standing right there looking at you. There's two Florida State and Louisville who at one time were the top five in the nation. You say no way. Yeah, if they at some point expand the field to 90 teams, then yeah, I think Clemson's okay, got a great why shot. Do you, uh, wait, wait, wait. Then okay. how can we say Purdue belongs in? Did I say Purdue belongs yeah, in? Yeah, you said it the other day. I did, the other day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we were having dinner. With an offensive uh, rebound uh, and a reverse stuff. A nice reverse jam in there. You know, produce 15 14, but they got great wins too. They blew up Virginia by 29. They blew up Michigan State by 29. So you think Purdue belongs in, obviously. No, no I think that number one, I don't like that. Look at Carrie. You He's just talked here. about all of Purdue's no, no. big wins. I know, I'm talking about they're going to probably get in because of them. Oh. Beat Indiana twice. My point is, I read to see the schools, like if Stephen F. Lost think it's beating their conference, they belong in. They've had a great year. Great year. No. Knock those kids to the sideline. Liberty's 27 and 3. Oh, let's get back to the game. We got a good game. Okay. Oh. That sounds like a plan. Diakite from deep. Got it. Oh, Diakite. He's become a star. He's got that swag, baby. Here come. Oh, yes, sir. -y. Here come the Cavaliers. And not, not the Cleveland Cavaliers. <laughs> the Virginia Cavaliers. Vernon Carey. Vernon Carey, he's the guy that wants the ball, man. He wants the ball. Shot clock down to six. See, they got you playing their game. They got you taking all the time. Shot clock at two. Trey Jones gets it to Goldwire. They have no idea oh, that the shot clock oh, is winding down. Sight. It's a shot clock violation they, on Duke. They That's lost their fifth sight. turnover. What wins here today? Will it be defense? Will it be offense? Come on, Coach Mishusin. Who gets the advantage? Is it the D or is it the O? On that possession, <laughs> the D had a major advantage, and I'm surprised that a Duke team would be that unaware of the shot clock as Goldwire had no idea, neither did Trey Jones, that it was winding all the way down, but we said something had to give. Duke, top of the country in offensive numbers, and no one allows less points per game than Virginia. Yeah, Virginia, they used that shot clock. The Akite is fouled by Wendell Moore. He has really, I'm telling you, Diakite, he has a chance to maybe make a roster next year in the NBA. He really does. I mean, the kid plays defense, seems to enjoy playing. Maybe he's a little one-on-one, -on -one, does that good first step. He's got a good bounce off the floor. That was the third foul on Wendell Moore, but only the third team foul this half on Duke. Big mismatch on Huff, he should slide inside, but now he's got carry on. He releases from Gary White open and it's Sia. He had Clark lost it. Braxton Key found it and reverses Braxton it home to tie well, the game. I'm telling you one thing, Braxton Key has given him quality basketball. The former Crimson Tide, Alabama. Little T.O. right there. What did Coach K tell us, though, when I preach out in court? He said the one thing about Virginia is they play all these close games, so they have that ability. And his wife was a cheerleader here. She used to cheer. During the Ralph Sampson era, she was a student at Virginia. She must be having battles with her daughter. Her daughter went to Duke, and her daughter dates Emil Jefferson out with the magic from a Duke star. So the Green family is watching this game intensely. Offensive rebound for Wendell Moore. Got to block out. The art of blocking out really drives me nuts. And we don't see many teams do that. We saw they can do that last night. Shot clock winding down for Duke again. Trey Jones hits a oh, big three. That's a big player, man. He's been around the block. He understands how to play. He and Gary really have such special talents, the two of them. Well, they're playing in the NBA now. 15 games in a row and double figure scoring for Trey Jones. You know, he can get a lot of talk in terms of being a potential player of the year in the conference. <laughs> Challenging at the rim, Cassius Stanley all over. Braxton Key, and Stanley here comes Stanley. Wendell Moore. But he Stan turns it over. Stanley got that great athletic ability. 
is a captain. He's the catalyst. He's the guy that controls the whole tempo of the game. The little guy. He Mr. Clark. Him. Lobs one up. And mistimed it to Huff looking for the alley-oop. Back the other way comes Trey Jones. Yeah, there was no time. That play was not available. That play was not available. Jones rises up off the side rim. Diakite gets into it with uh -oh. Vernon Carey. A little stare down and James Breeding, one of the officials, jumps in between those two as quickly as possible. That's the third foul on Vernon Carey. And coming up next, it's going to be a big one in the Big Ten at the Xfinity Center. Number nine, Maryland. Number 24, Michigan State. The Terps have a two-game lead in the Big Ten over the Spartans. It's right here on ESPN and the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. That's a big, big game, man. No question about it. They come off that dramatic win over Minnesota. And I'll tell you once, and I'll tell you again, don't underestimate Michigan State come March Madness. Well, let's see what happens here. Clark in control of the ball. Iaquite, travel. Vernon's got three, right? He does. Carey's got three. That's the 14th Virginia turnover. And they're down by three. 15th consecutive game. And Duke on the road. has got a three-point lead. Trying to tie the top of the standings of the ACC with Louisville and Florida State. Well, the two guys have 27 to 42 points. Figure it out percentage-wise how valuable they are to do. Delorier, high-low pass. Knocked away by Huff. Huff did a great job reading that pass. Poor job. That was telegraphed big time. That was a Marconi special, man. Telegraphed that day. You know what Marconi was? <laughs> He's my buddy. He? I, 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 I took sixth grade history. Here's Key at the free throw line. Bounces it low to Huff. He's got the size Look at advantage. Size. Look at that Huff size. Catches Stanley. Go to the basket. Right over him and yeah. in. Go to the basket. Use that big size, big fella. Take it to the rack. Take it to the goal. We got ourselves a unbelievable. It's going to the wire. Well, if Samson, if he played that post, he would take it in like you could not believe. What a talent. Three time player of the year in college basketball. Off and Diakite, both there to snuff out the attempt on the drive hey. by Stanley. Oh, and there oh, is oh, one of the greatest Ruff, of all time. Ruff said, Man, why can't I get on the floor? It's Terry Holland, coach formerly of the. Right here was a terrific coach. Let me tell you this. I believe, I, I think I'm right here. Only one other guy went three times player of the year in college basketball. The big redhead, our colleague, Mr. Wolf. It'll stay with Duke with two on the shot clock. As Joey Baker forced one up with the shot clock winding down. So this has to be a quick trigger here for Duke. This is vintage basketball by Virginia. Trying to lull you to sleep and hope they can pull it out at the end. That's a shot clock violation. Five games in a row they have won, basically in the 50s, and the five they've won have been by one or two points. And Mike Krzyzewski told us before the game, he said, you don't want to get into that scenario where you're coming down the wire in a close game because they're so acclimated to that, and he's got all these young kids. Look at their defense. Look at the numbers they've allowed. Syracuse says, take that off. And say, why can't you put up there that we came to Virginia and we beat them? And we beat them on this floor after they embarrassed us and held us to 34 at home in the opening. Off down the lane again. But he is fouled on a hand check by Delorier. That's the second on Delorier. Huff has really gotten better and better. He really has. Deloria brings in that experience. One foul left to give for each with 6.19 to go. Huff trying to seal inside. Oh, the they lob pass. it to him. He's bad held. Pass. He is held by Cassius Stanley. So now Duke is out of fouls to give. That's Stanley's first. But that's the team's sixth. Truly a bad pass to the Detroit Florida lob on. So Jack White checks back in for Deloria. So they're going with experience now. You haven't seen much of her. Iaquite wants to back down Cassius Stanley across the lane. The old school skyhook is good. Ralph Sampson had to like that shot. He got him one on one, took advantage of his size. He's got swag now. He's become a star. Iaquite, one of the best in the conference. Coach K told us before the game. An offensive foul is called on Vernon Carey. That's four. That's four. 
Hey, this is the sixth game in a row, I believe. He's had four fouls in all the games. Look at big, big Lewis out. Sudden would be proud of that. Now they oh. did not call a foul on that play. Oh, they didn't call a what? Uh, it looked like they had. Here's Diakite. Hit the underside of the rim. Gets it back. Somehow throws it out to Huff. Boy, and a chance look, for a reset. A lucky break right there. Put the ball in his hands. A lot of good things happen all year long. The ball in the hands of a little guy. He's the maestro man. He's the maestro man. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. He goes around Carey. Oh, Carey able to help wall off the Hoos. And Jack White ends up with the rebound. Jones and Carey right now. It's going to be a two-man game with two of them. Carey draws the foul at the front of the rim. See, Jones and Carey right there. Jones enters. He knows where the ball should go. Cerebro, right, understands good basketball feel. I'm going to my man inside. That foul on Jay Huff, his third. He disagrees. But Vernon Carey's going to go to the free throw line, and if he hits both, it will be our ninth lead change. Crowd here disagrees big time, which you expect. You would expect that. Hey, Bob Tillman's at stake again, man. There's a lot at stake here. Duke wins this game. We got a three-way tie in the ACC with Louisville, Florida State, and Duke. If Virginia wins, now they get right in the hunt for a potential chance to win the conference. Well, they're only one, one game, game in the loss column behind the top of the race with one week to go in the ACC. You gotta, we are tied again. You got to really appreciate the talent of this kid on the free throw line. Our kids coming out of high school wants the ball. The game is on the line, and he wants the basketball. And Jones, smart enough to know, I'm going into my man. I'm going to my PTP, my prime time performer. He strokes two free throws. Smart. We'll take him out for a moment. We want him to get that fourth. Full court pressure. We've seen it. Has not bothered Virginia. Has not gotten them away from doing what they do. Control tempo. Marlene changes for the ninth time. As Duke's back on top by a point with five to go. Huff with that screen. Paxton Key on the stumble. Able to get it to Huff. Here's Kihei Clark. Diakite steps back. A little too strong. Huff with the back tap, and that's a foul on Jay Huff, and that's a bad one. It's a bad foul. It's fourth. So now with 4.52 to go. Will Tony Bennett start to play defense and offense with Jay Huff and sub him in and out possession by possession? You think you'd have to. And Huff will now go to the bench. That's an easy call right there. That's so Cody Staffman back in with Huff heading to sit down with his fourth. Free throw line be big coming down the end of the game. He just converted two in a row. And Stanley hits the front end of the one and one. This kid has so much potential because you can't teach many of the elements he possesses. The he's, gotten better. he's gotten better as the year has gone on. The first 12 games of the year averaged 10 a game, but over 14 a game the last 14 games. Now Delorier, it looks like, picks up a cheap one. No, it's not going to be Delorier. Michigan State, Maryland coming up, Big Ten action, best conference in basketball coming up after this game. You know, Duke had, what, 50 fouls were called in a game? It's, what did Mike tell us, 50 in that game with the Wake Forest? That foul on Jack White, so he will head to the bench, and Vernon Carey comes back in. Both teams over the limit, Diakite with a one and one Well, you come this time of the game, you got to make free throws. you got to make free throws, especially when scoring is so difficult for a team like Virginia. He has really improved as a player, has he not? I think the confidence he got from his play in the championship run has really taken him to this level where he came here knowing I'm the guy, I'm the star, I'm the guy that's got to step it up. Uh, born in Guinea in Africa, came to the U.S. After converting from being a soccer player to all of a sudden finding out when you get to be about six foot seven, it's time to take up basketball. Mamadi Diakite has found a home in Charlottesville. Yep. We are tied at 45. 45 all, baby. Duke and Virginia. You sort of expect this. Good ball movement right there by Duke. 
They want to get the ball. Vernon's going to set a screen and roll in. There he is. Ooh. Is it Diakite? Eight to shoot. Perry heads to the baseline. Now he's double teamed. Caught under the basket. It's out of bounds. It'll stay with Duke with four on the timer. Fans all standing up. They really know what's at stake here. That was a poor display right there by Carey. Dribble, 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 dribble. There's nowhere to go. You got to pass the ball. Get rid of it. Two guys around you. People are wide open. Yeah, right there, he looked like a kid coming out of high school who had to play 28 games. And has been a star for 28. Alex O'Connell right off the bench. Gives it up. DeLorean off the front rim. Carey taps it to the corner, but couldn't control it. Not good execution right there by Duke in that possession. Everybody wants a little edge. Looking for that little edge with the guys that blow a whistle. I think they're doing a solid job here today. I really do. So difficult to blow a whistle, man. In this. You look good as a rapper. Let's see you out there with that striped shirt. Why? So you can say oh. bad things about me? <laughs> go tie game every possession big and big and big play all year to be on the top of the ladder in the conference these teams here that's what it's about well the 10 side still has not scored needs the post here to keep eight to shoot he's gonna go one on one key fades away rainbow jumper and it's pulled down by deloria deloria getting a lot of minutes in this game He's had some good moments. Kite now you got a good defender playing against Carey, head to head. Here we go. Going to try to isolate him one on one. Carey over Diakite, short, tapped around. Paxton Keys got it for Virginia. Not Duke really. has missed their last six that, that from the field. That shot wasn't available. Here. That shot wasn't available. Diakite won that battle. Made him take really a tough, tough shot. The angles, he really did a great job taking away the angles. Kihei Clark, the reverse, fouled oh, on the floor. Oh, and well. Joining the conference. Going to be a great finish there at JPJ. Bob and Dickie D, back to you guys. Well, hopefully that game is as good as our game, tied at 45 and 315 to go. And by the way, Sports Center tonight after Arizona UCLA, Bill Karim and Zubin Mahenti. They'll have a James Harden, Jason Tatum breakdown, plus their matchup in January ended with a brawl. Kansas and K-State squared off again, this time in Manhattan, just about went down to the wire. And D-lineman linebacker coverage at the Combine Sports Center after Pac-12 hoops on ESPN and the ESPN app later tonight. And if you're Virginia, he's the guy you want in the free throw line. He shoots 86%. Let me say this. See Duke score? The lowest they've scored all year. They won the game. They had 63 against Boston College. They may not get near 63 today. Now we get down to winning time, baby. Shot selection becomes big. Understanding who's on the court and who you want to get the ball. Moore throws it back up top. Trey Jones, seven to shoot, tries a three. Rolls it home! It's unbelievable. He makes big shot after big shot all year. That's why he's all conference. He's in the running for player of the year. Big three by Trey Jones. And his brother jumps up with joy in the locker room with Memphis. It's my brother. He had oh, what a nice set up for the uncontested oh, the dunk guy. for Braxton King. I tell you what, the little guy, he may be small in stature, but he's a giant with the rocks in his hand. What a penetration. The 3D man, drive, draw, dish the rock. Diakite lost it. Trey Jones oh, gave it up. Here comes Kihei Clark after our 12th lead change. Virginia looking to add to the lead. Coming up on two minutes to go. He's a giant with the rock in his hands, this little guy. He knows how to play. So there's their two stars, Kihei and Clark. They want to keep them in bound. Tough pass key right there. Handle the pass, and Goldwire gets a steal. Tough pass to make right there. There's a tendency a little bit hard at times with his passes. Trey Jones straight away. His first miss from three-point land is now three for four. Then three in a row, so why not go for the four? Taking time now. Typical, typical Virginia basketball. Going to play at our pace and our tempo. You can beat him at this tempo. That's a giant, giant win, man. Right now, this tempo is all Virginia. 
A lot of tension going on to the benches, I can guarantee you that. Trey Jones balance. goes to work quickly, off balance. Oh, That's oh, goaltending on oh, Dia Quinta. Oh, oh, no question, a good call, but didn't have to do that. Shot had no chance to go in. No chance to go in. Yeah, on its way down, but certainly did not look from our angle like it was going to reach the rim. It's a good call. I think it's the right call to make. You got two eyes. What do you think? The ball is coming down. You got to get the ball going up. Yeah, that's goaltending. That's no question. It's goaltending. That ball was coming down. Yeah. Now you got to settle down. Your Virginia right there. Have some poise. You're going to get the ball back and down one. It's a one-point lead now for Duke with just under a minute to go. Now Virginia has to determine where they want to go to try and find some points. Well, you got to go with Clark with the ball in his hands, trying to make some plays for Diakite on the inside. Huff's on the floor now as well, his size. Lots going to happen with the penetration of Clark. He's got to be the catalyst, make something happen offensively to get them a good shot. Call a little timeout right here. An extra timeout for 30 seconds called by Virginia. So Tony Bennett needed a little more time in the huddle than the review at the monitor allowed to draw up what he wants on this next offensive possession. Well, no matter what, he's going to get the ball back anyway. They're going to get the ball back because of the shot clock. And, and this also illustrates what Mike Krzyzewski was talking about with his team. Yes, they've got Duke uniforms on, and yes, they're basically the Yankees. But having said that, with NC State and North Carolina to wrap up the season on the slate for Duke, they've got four freshmen in their starting lineup. They've got Trey Jones. Outside of Trey Jones, they don't have any of their main players that have been through this before. Well, you've got Diakite, you've got Kihei Clark, you've got some guys that Tony Bennett can rely upon, used to close games, or part of a national championship well, team last year. That's what he told us before the game. He said, really down the stretch, those kids have been there in the big moments. And you talk about certainly Clark and you keep going to get down to execution right now. Make sure you get the shot you want. Duke with the reigning national champs. In a way, really not really defending the national champ when you lose three guys like Jerome Guy and Hunt on the field. Let's see what happens. I get the ball in Clark's hands. And they do. And in his hands, try to make something happen. You've got to go to the offensive boards too, man. Ikite spins baseline, banks it in. Wow, nice move by him. I tell you one thing, he has really elevated his game. Now here's Duke with the ball. Duke's got the ball now. You got to be aware of Vernon Carey and Trey Jones, two-man basketball. And by going that quickly, basketball. Virginia gets the two for one. We've got about a nine-second differential. Trey Jones off balance, oh, off the back. window, won't go. Loose what, ball, what a, a scramble what for hustle. it. Who's got it? What hustle. A held ball. The possession arrow belongs to Virginia. Tremendous hustle right there by the Duke kids, too, though. They battle the battle the battle. That is, you know, don't give me that possession. That's it. I got to put it, dump the ball up. I wish they got rid of that wall. Let the game be won with strategy and coaching. Not by an alternate possession. And here we go now. Full court pressure, not a time yet. 15.8 on the clock. Kihei Clark is the number two free throw shooter in the ACC at 86%. So they you gotta, know that Virginia would love to get it to his hands. They've got to get his hands. got to get it to him. He's got to get free for the ball. Now they've got to call timeout. They'll have to use the last one they've got left with just under 16 seconds to go. They're going to stack him with some people and just break him right or left. Will this be another? Will this be another Virginia W coming down the wire? We just posted five wins in a row, and it's been mailbox time for the Cavalier fans, man. Well, the They're Hoos, used to this. The Who started off four and four in the ACC. They've responded by winning five in a row, part of a stretch where they've won eight of their last nine to get to 12 and five in league play. So as we approach March Madness, they've become a much better team. But boy, a win over Duke at home, 
That, that would be something special Absolutely. as they are 98 and 2 under Tony Bennett when that. they have held opponents under 50 and they're undefeated this season. Well, Duke is sitting right at 50 points well, in the game. We didn't think. We thought the big question would be when we were all together yesterday can. Can Virginia score enough points in terms of getting to the 70s? Because you would expect Duke to get to the 70s. The lowest they've ever had is 63 all year against BC. Got to get the ball clock. You've got to find clock with the basketball. The quick foul given. Smart. As Cassius Stanley fouls Braxton Key, who only shoots 59%. Smart right there. Really understanding the scouting report. And here, Virginia, you really got to get that ball to Clark in that case. 86% free throw shooter. Pressure on now for Key. Former Crimson Tide. He's played really well in this game, too. But this, this is big right here. And that's team foul number nine, so this is the final one and one for Virginia. Scenario here, he makes both. He had a three point game. Well, Can't connect. About that. Here comes Duke. He's got a timeout left. Stanley Smart right there in that foul. Oh, 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 there it is. Carry, pump oh. fake, blocked underneath by Huff. Huff with the block shot. He did Whoa. it again. Huff, Puff missed the Huff. Oh, Huff and Puff missed the Puff. Mr. Huff, he's been a star. Look at these Virginia fans. They're smelling the W. This is That's his 10th oh, block oh, of the night. Oh, there's Kerry. I thought he had himself a layup. But Huff says, no, no, no. No, look at the emotion. Look at the feeling. Oh, these kids play their hearts out. Both teams playing their hearts out. This is ACC basketball competition. Compete. He's got 10, Ralph holds the record with 12 block shots. Now Vernon Carey had to give the quick foul. That's his fifth. So not only is Duke down by a point with 3.7 seconds to go, if they were to somehow force overtime, they're without Vernon Carey. That's been his problem, though, really fouling a great deal. He's taken and reduced the number of minutes. His statistics per minute are unreal. Off only a 51% free throw shooter. Wow, he's got a chance. You can do a lot there with 3.7 on that clock. They also have you a timeout. Can, you can do a great deal of running that ball up the court. This baby's not over yet if you're a Virginia fan. Off makes the second. Mike Krzyzewski wants to call his final timeout and draw something wow. up with 3.7 seconds to go. And Virginia on top by two. Bob with shoes and a dick by towel. We're having some fun here in Charlottesville. Allison Williams having some fun back in the studio. Hey there, Bob. Quickly, just want to let people know they are underway in College Park between Michigan State and Maryland. That game is currently airing on ESPN News, and we'll move over to ESPN once we get a final between Duke and Virginia. Bob? Hey, Allison, well, Allison. Story now in the studio. Wow. And uh, we're all waiting to watch that Big Ten clash that could determine the outcome of the Big Ten title. We've got a game here that goes a long way towards determining the ACC regular season championship. Well, I'm looking forward to see what's going to happen here at 3.7. This is a lot going to happen. Duke can get a quality shot right here. They definitely can get a quality shot. Watch Jones break to the ball. Who are you looking for here if you're Duke? Well, I think they want to get Jones. Jones the basketball. He's Ray their Jones star. Right in front of us at midcourt. The Laurier will throw it in with 3.7 seconds to go. And you don't want to foul if you're Virginia. You don't want to foul. The Laurier off balance. Gets it, Jones, gets it to Jones. Jones, Jones for the win. Oh. Off the side rim. Oh. And Virginia survives. They survive six in a row now. All six they have one life right down the wire. Incredible. 